Hello and welcome to Defect of the Month. Defect of the Month comes from the MPL Defect database. My name is Bob Willis and uh, hopefully I'll guide you through some of the defects that we're featuring uh, this month. Now a number of products in our industry use underfill. An underfill is there to provide mechanical support to the solder joint and the component on the PCB during vibration, shock and drop testing. In the past, underfill has been used to even out the difference in expansion rates between component and PCB, thus preventing a premature failure of the solder joint. So the underfill has provided enhancements to reliability. However, we've got to remember that if we're reworking a printed circuit board and it happens to have underfill associated with a component in close proximity to the area that we're reworking, we can actually get solder squeeze out. And it's an interesting defect where during the rework operation, if the solder on joints on a package that have been underfilled, they may go into a liquid state again, which we don't want to do, and we should avoid doing it as good process engineers. But if it does do that, the solder expands during uh, heating, and it can actually force itself out around the other balls, and of course, through the underfill. And what you actually end up seeing is little solder balls on the surface of the printed circuit boards. The big problem here is that you can have intermittent joints because of this. So when the assembly cools down again, the solder joints underneath the BGA, which has been underfilled, may well still work. However, in operation, as the product uh, heats up, there's every opportunity that those weaknesses may be shown up. So the key thing here is getting proper rework set up, proper profiling to minimize this possibility on any product that incorporates underfill, either on side one or on side two.